Hello and good evening. Greetings to you, saints first of all, and Guyanese here at home, those of you across the world in what is called the diaspora. Welcome to this broadcast. As you can see from the topic, it is one that has given me cause to accept what I consider to be a continuous challenge. My hope is that this broadcast, although I know it's an, uh, uh, almost impossible, but that this would put to rest the continuous, deliberate, uh, more or less, as far as I'm concerned, moronic, ignorant, uninformed accusations that are continued to be leveled against me because of my position regarding election 2020 here in Guyana, where I have chosen, as any Guyanese should, to stand on the side of the law. So shalom to all of you. Please let me know if the audio is fine, the video is fine. As long as we have a very good audio video uh, feed, I would ask that you would cause others to be aware of this broadcast by either sharing it or inviting them because many persons are not aware as to when I'm live. And I would really like this to be live, especially to those who are from the PPPC camp and other minority parties who are seeking to accuse me of failing to address the incumbent president, David Arthur Granger, as a dictator. I have no issue speaking to that now because it would be refreshing for me to see those said people tuck their tails between their legs and vanish. Let me begin by informing you, as I would always do, that I do not, will not, shall not support any political party in Guyana for as long as your principles, policies, edicts, operations speak to that which is immoral and against the ways of Yahweh. I am not a crony. I don't bow to any, any political agendas. I have none. Multiple parties would have approached me claiming that I have influence and I have got what they perceive to be the ability to lead masses of people. And as a result, they were asking whether I would please join them in this 2020 election campaign. I refused all. I rejected them all. Why? Because my hands must be clean. My conscience must be clean, and I would never be caught in a trap whereby I have to be cautious about speaking, lest I offend my political colleagues. I have none. But, I have come to realize a very, very sad and dooming nature regarding my fellow Guyanese people. Most of them, quite a few of them, especially at election season, it seems as if Guyanese who are politically motivated remove or abandon every form of common sense and rational thinking. And they subject themselves to what is called being gullible in that whatever their political favorites say, that happens to be the law the rule of thought, and that which governs their way of thinking and speaking. It is unfortunate that in an age in which there is so much access to instant information, albeit at times inaccurate, but more often than not, if you check a dictionary, it would be accurate. These people are still unable to basically define Terms. Are you hearing me clearly? 
and seeing clearly. Because I know I was having some internet issues earlier. I hope there's somebody around who can monitor the stream for me so that could, if persons are commenting, I could not be um, missing it. It's fine. Thank you so much. So persons have been saying from the PPP camp that the PPP civic, I should say, camp, that I am speaking to all of these matters regarding elections 2020, but I'm not ever calling out David Granger for the dictator that he is. Well, I accept your challenge. And let's have the conversation this evening. If you're going to accuse somebody, especially me, of taking the side of the APNU AFC, it has to be that you are unfamiliar with my record and my history with the APNU AFC. I am the same person who was removed from the National Communications Network television station for what was claimed to be my being too political in that I criticized the actions of the then government. Same person. I was unconstitutionally removed, censored, which is unlawful according to the Constitution of Guyana for speaking against the behaviors of this government. Same person. However, although their actions towards me would have been on the part, from the premise of the Constitution, it would have been unlawful and unjust, I still refuse to be in any way hypocritical, deceptive, and deliberately erroneous in speaking to, the, to this matter. I am not the kind of person who, because someone has done me wrong, I will fabricate words or terms and accusations just for them to look as if they're bad. I don't do that nonsense. I, be, I would always, always be guilty of speaking the truth. This broadcast doesn't have to be long because what I know it would cause to happen is that those who are from the PPP Civic Party would more than likely resort to slinging their usual trash and mud or like I said, they just vanish into thin air after this. But there's some in the diaspora who are, they're not even in Guyana. They're in New York City, they're in Canada. They're not here. And they're being fed whatever form of information it is. They are then repeating that David Granger is being or is acting as though he's a dictator. They're calling him now. The broadcast was paused for some reason. Am I back? Let me know if I'm back, please. Is it fine? Okay, I'm, it's, it's, it should have been resumed. Just a minute from back live because there was an interruption in the broadcast for some reason. Let me know when it's live so that I can address these people. Is it good? It's fine? Let me know when the broadcast is back, please. Okay, it seems, it seems as though we, we, we're beginning to get some feet again. There was an interruption, but hopefully I'm back. Great, I'm back. According to most dictionaries, Oxford, Cambridge, Webster, and the others, what is the definition of the term dictator. Because if David Granger 
is labeled a dictator, then by all means, there has to be some authority. Not a person. Some literary authority called a dictionary that will define the conduct, the nature of a dictator. And if David Granger suits that uh, character, then by all means, tonight I'll call him a dictator. However, if your party leader from the PPP Civic or any other party suits the description of a dictator, I hope that you would have the intestinal fortitude to call him a dictator. According to all dictionaries, all, here is the definition of a dictator. A dictator is a person with, or a ruler with total power over a country. First of all, a ruler with total or absolute power over a country. Is anybody from the PPP civic side who has been accusing me all week of not calling David Granger a dictator, are you present? Are you here? This is a good time to get out of your bed and show up on my broadcast. Where are you? Because first of all, a dictator has to have total power over a country. He rules everything. Does David Granger have that authority? If he does, how are you able to do many of the things that you've done since March 2nd? A dictator is typically someone who has obtained control by force, not vote. Force. Can you tell me, in 2020, March the 2nd, when did David Arthur Granger use force to send to office? When? Because he's not sworn in yet. So since you want to be the typical, the typical de definition of morons and fools, I call you to the platform tonight. You are following the echoes of a party leader who first of all said that there will be a coup d'etat if David Granger is sworn in. I have never heard a person overthrow himself in my whole life. Barra Jagdio is the first person in my entire life of learning who has caused me to know that an, an individual has the power to overthrow himself and become president. I don't support David Granger. I don't support APNU AFC. I do not support PPP Civic. I don't support any one of you politicians. You are all the same. However, I do support that which is called righteousness, unlike my friend Phyllis Jordan. who claims to do so. This is how righteous people behave. I am waiting for somebody from PPP Civic who will always show up on my broadcast to tell me, invite them, invite Jack Dee and all of them, to tell me when did David Granger use force to ascend to power in this country? When? For him to be a dictator, he has to have been able to utilize force or he has to demonstrate that he has total, absolute power over Guyana. Does he have it? If he has it, how are you watching for the foot medal container all night? In the midst of a corona pandemic and he's not moving any one of y'all. You have decided to keep bombarding me, Omar George and all of you, saying that I'm refusing to speak to David Granger being a dictator. Well, I'm speaking to it now. Since you want me to say he's a dictator, let's address what a dictator is. When Region 4 had the issue, David Granger said, whatever the court said, I'll accept. They went to the court. The judge instructed Mingo to return 
the Chief Justice, and to follow certain protocols, he returned. Where was David Granger? Who was storming Jeekum's office? Who was pointing at the Chief Elections Officer and berating him publicly? For all, us, all to see on social media. Who was doing that? David Granger? Which party did the Carter Center say erupted in the conduct? You are Guyanese saw it. Who was doing that? David Granger? Who was telling Irfan Ali that when he gets into power, the two police officers that were preventing the person from uh, ascending the stairs, he must mark their faces so that when he gets into power, he can fire them. Who was doing that, David Granger? Since you want us to talk, let's have the conversation. A dictator is someone who functions in an autocratic way. Autocratic means the person is a law unto himself. So let us see. Who is saying, who is saying, David Granger, Jack Deal, who is saying that regardless of what the court says, they don't care whether the court accepts the petition or not, David Granger is not the president, and he will not be respected as president, and they will call Irfan Ali president. Who was saying that? Who is exhibiting the autocratic behavior? David Granger or Bauer Jack Deal? You asked me to call David Granger a dictator. I'm telling you what a dictator does. Who is saying that regardless of the most supreme, the most supreme law in this country? So Omar George Moron is on my page. And he has the foolish nerve to define the word dictator, but then ask me to, to call David Granger dictator. That is how stupid these people are who support certain parties in this country. A dictator has nothing to do with whether you have rigged an election. It has to do with how you rule a country. Kindly show me when David Granger used force from March 2nd to now to gain rulership over Guyana. When? Who is saying? Who is saying? That regardless of what the court, the, the Supreme Court that is, not a magistrate court, regardless of what a Supreme Court justice says, he is not accepting the court ruling. Who is saying that? Did David Granger say that? Is there a record where David Granger said that? And he was public in saying that? No. So who's, who's the autocrat in Guyana? Who is the autocrat in Guyana who's saying that regardless of what the most supreme, apart from the appellate court, who said? Have you ever seen, because I need some history, have you ever seen a dictator who is not in office or not sworn in? Awaiting court orders? Where have you ever seen that? A dictator sitting saying, whenever the court decides, I shall be sworn in. Who told the people that they will take to the streets and they'll have hundreds of protests to remove someone who's deemed leader? by GCOM and the Chancellor of the Judiciary. Who said that? So what persons who are delinquent and deficient in comprehension would do is they shall invent definitions that are not found in any dictionary. Because I just read the definition from the dictionary for you. But they will have to invent definitions and scenarios to paint David Granger as a dictator. Regardless of what definition proves otherwise, they will have to do it because it suits their 
their, their, their strategy and their system of operation. I do not function by idiocy. I cannot relate to students. Someone has just messaged me saying they're asking Melanie Henry if you can share the broadcast, sir, please. So kindly do so. I'm having some internet trouble. Persons who are shallow in understanding, who are void of basic reasoning, will ignore definitions of terms like dictators and coup d'etat. And they're going to just say the words and, and Guyanese, like Omar George or wherever he's from, is just going to chase after these terminologies. If David Granger is a dictator, then he has to, by all means, demonstrate that he rules Guyana with total power. My question is, does he? Second question. If David Granger is a dictator, he would have had to, in a typical manner, attain or obtain power by force. Did he? And since the PPP Civic has a representative in Omar George, he can answer the question. First of all, does David Granger have total rulership over Guyana? Does he rule over Barra Jagdeo? Does he control Jagdeo, Irfan Ali, and all of these people's behavior? Does he rule the judiciary? What he wants is not what he does. At least you, can, you, you came to represent the PPP. So come here and be stupid publicly, please. You're getting this for free. Not what he wants to, does he? Does David Granger have absolute rulership over Guyana? The answer is yes or no. Thank you. Others have common sense. No, he doesn't. Does David Granger, or has he, obtained total control of Guyana by force, which is military force? No. Third, thirdly, is he autocratic, meaning that he's saying in this conversation, it does not matter what the courts say, I will not accept any court ruling. I will do what I want. Did he say that? So now we have persons who are psychics because they're able to enter David Granger's world and read his mind to figure out what he wants to say. Because remember now, they, I just asked a question and one of the representatives isn't able to say exactly what he did so they're now saying what he wants to do. My question to you, Guyana, is this. If he is not doing these things, how is he a dictator? That is my question. How is he a dictator? Someone please invite Melanie Henry. Melanie, like my, sis my sister's name, Henry. Thank you so much. Now, all of your accusations are irrelevant to what is called the definition of the term. Please, your children are at home with you on this uh, uh, COVID-19 self-quarantine or, or lockdown. Please, please, parents, teach them what is called reading comprehension or listening comprehension. I'm asking you basic questions. I'm not asking what he wants to do. I'm asking what has he done? Because for him to be a dictator, you'd have had to exhibit dictatorial behaviors. Mingo is not Granger. Somebody please take Omar phone and throw it in the garbage. Do you understand what dictatorship is? I will define it until some of you decide you can tell the truth, which you can, by the way.
a dictator does not do what the record has shown David Granger would have done, and I told you he should not have done it in the first place. He had an authority to do so, which is to ask the CARICOM leaders and ask the court to have a recount. Dictators don't do that. Dictatorship has nothing to do with whether an election that is incomplete. Let me have some Ugandans with this, please. The term election covers an entire series of processes. You cannot be this stupid so easily. At least make an effort to be stupid. Don't do it so easily. Show me that you're trying hard to be stupid. The term election is a series of processes which ends with the chancellor of the judiciary swearing in a president. If that process is not completed, the election is not over because someone has to be elected to office. Or they can be what you're seeing now, a series of orders and actions, litigations being made so that they can be prevent or they can be cause to have GCOM and other uh, persons follow certain protocols so that at the end of the process, the election is completed. Until a president is sworn in in Guyana, the electoral process is incomplete. I am asking you. If you're from the side of foolishness, Apnu AFC or other side, please make an effort to be stupid tonight. Don't convince me that you do this so easily. I beg of you, for the sake of your teenage child who may be having access to your, your Facebook page or your, 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 your young adult child, let them see that the father has some sense. In a democratic society, what is being deemed by the European Union, uh, ABC nations, and now Guyanese have decided they, they just fall like parrots. They're just going to echo a sound without having comprehension. So when they say the will of the people is not respected, are you telling me that PPP Civic had 100% of the votes? What is the will of the people? Which people are you talking about? Did the PPP Civic acquire one? 100% of the votes, even when they presented their spreadsheet, did they have 100% of the votes? I'm asking a question. Maybe Omar or some other representative of Farouz Khan, whoever his name is, can answer the question. Did the PPP Civic acquire 100% of the votes? Because I'm about to give redress to your, you're your loosely using the term, the will of the people. Because you heard Americans use it, so you think Americans are smart people across the board. I'm talking, I'm talking about diplomats. Did the PPP Civic publish any spreadsheet, any result, saying that they have had 100% of the votes in Guyana? It's a simple question. It's not a stupid question. Yes or no? For Roskan, you're here to represent the PPP Civic, so I'll answer the, you'll, you answer the question when I ask them. It's my broadcast, not yours. If you can't answer the question simply, then you just remove yourself or keep speaking like a fool. Did the PPP Civic acquire 100% of the vote? The answer is yes or no. Thank you. Omar, again, this is your night. At the end of this broadcast, I hope I can present you with an e-trophy for being stupid. The fool of the night is Omar, Omar George. 54% is not 100%. 54% is not 100%. Therefore, when you speak to the will of the people, you are pretending as though they are 100% people in Guyana supporting the PPP Civic, which is absolutely untrue. Therefore, therefore, since there is no final count in the electoral process according to you, since you said you want the vote to be counted and every vote must be counted, it stands to reason that you do not even know whether you got 100%. But based on what you presented to me, 
You don't have 100%. So what about the 40% or 15% or 20% of people who don't want you to rule? Is that the will of the people? What is called the will of the people? The will of the people is determined in an electoral process that's a concept where a majority is determined by election. Not conviction of PPP supporters or APNU supporters. That's why it's called an electoral process where elections are had and according to democratic society, the majority of the people will rule or their ruler will lead. You cannot have an incomplete electoral process and say that you know the will of the people. When GCOM's commissioners from the PPP Civic said they are yet to see all of the statements of polls, so how you arrive at 54%? Thank you, Ron Singh. They have to say the will of the PPP supporters is not being respected. Don't say the will of the people. No one knows to date the final ruling regarding the electoral process because the GCOM's chief election officer the GCOM's commissioners and the GCOM chairman, herself being a commissioner at large, have yet to meet. How in the world can you say that the PPP has 54%, the APNU FC has 1% or 2%, or APNU has 55%, when they are yet to give from the GCOM's secretariat the final result of the elections? This broadcast is not about who has won or who has lost. It's about my addressing the fact that somebody said, Omar and others, that I am not calling David Granger a dictator. This broadcast is for you to help me in the definition of the term that I present to you. Thus far, you have got a 0% rating in terms of common sense. Because you cannot tell me if David Granger has total rulership over Guyana. You can't. You cannot tell me that he has got or he obtained rulership of the nation by force. You cannot tell me that he is autocratic, meaning he was the one saying that regardless of what the court says, I will be in charge and I will not accept what the court says. Barrett Jaglio said that. Which one is showing dictatorial behavior? Which one? Who is acting like the dictator in Guyana? Who is saying that even if the electoral process by GCOM is completed and the commissioners of GCOM, according to law, make a decision according to law, the reports are submitted, they vet the reports, they have statements of poll that they've examined, and by the end of the process, they have determined that according to the statements of poll that is in the possession of, G of Ghani Elections Commission, they have determined that David Granger, the incumbent, has, would return because he was the candidate for president. Wait a second. If that process is finished, the chairman, who is Justice Claudette Singh, retired, she submits the report to the chance of the judiciary, who the, 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 the instructions or the information. And the chancellor says they shall swear David Granger in as president. Who has said in Guyana that they will not see David Granger as president? They will see Irfan Ali as president. Who said that? Who said those words? That regardless of what if Guyana's law is followed, much to the chagrin of others, of course, they'd be mad. Who said 
that if this legal process is taken in terms of the electoral process, who said that they will not respect David Granger as president? They will call Irfan Ali president. Who said that? Who said those words? As of now, I'm, ig I'm ignoring Omar George because he's just stupid. So I'll ask the question for others who have since answered me. Who said that regardless of what the outcome is from GCOM or the courts, they will not call David Granger president? Who said that? They will call Irfan Ali president. Thank you. Somebody's answered the question. So, Bara Jaglio said that. Who is demonstrating to us as Guyanese that they do not respect our court, our judiciary, our legal system? Who? Who is saying to us as a Guyanese people publicly that they will not accept the rule of the court of law in Guyana. Which one, therefore, is displaying, according to the definition which I read again, a dictator somebody who is autocratic in their conduct. They make the laws and they follow their own laws. That's a dictator. They don't care about the court. A dictator does what they want. They don't care. So what you will have to do is what I said you would do. You will have no choice but to digress or to turn away from the focus of this broadcast. Because you asked me, you asked me, Omar George and others, you asked me to call David Granger a dictator. I, therefore, would like to venture into defining what the word is before I call him that. Now I'm asking you to help me based on the dictionary's definition and you are digressing. You are taking an evasive approach. You are fleeing from the focal point, which is, is David Granger a dictator? You're now pointing to my supporting him. That is not the, the, fo the focus. The focus is what you asked me to do. Whether, whether, the ele elections were, in my opinion, credible. It's irrelevant to what you asked me to do. You asked me to name David Granger as a dictator. I have defined the word dictator for you. Is he one? You have admitted that A, he did not ascend to power by military force. You admitted that B, he is not a law unto himself. You have admitted that C, he does not have total rulership over Guyana. Therefore, based on your admission, you cannot label him a dictator unless you are defining him according to your party's politics. Should you desire for me to address whether the elections in Guyana would have been free and fair, I have given you and I shall continue to give you what happens to be my deepest heartfelt conviction about Guyana's electoral process. It is archaic. It is antiquated. It is stupid. Because there's too much technology available in the world today that we in our homes 
in November will be able to sit, most of you, and you can watch television in real time. Actually, the primaries are going on now, I think, in some parts. And you're seeing at the bottom of the screen, between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders, you are seeing instantly throughout the night who is leading and who is lost. The votes are being uploaded immediately. You are seeing that. We have all this technology. Why in the world? Why in the world can you not utilize basic technology? Our electoral process is stupid. Because if you have all of these polling agents, you have all these party representatives, you have all of you 75, and I'm just exaggerating because I'm just disgusted, you have 75 different people, 150 eyes in a room, and you count ballots, put it in a, in a, in, 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 in a box. Lock the box with 15 different padlock like you got some money to protect. You don't even lock a vault with money as much as you lock, lock ballot boxes. You do all of that. Then you get to a stage where you're now going to report based on what Carter Center said should be the case, and the whole country falls apart. This is the most ridiculous, stupid, antiquated system I've ever seen. And it has to end. Because it is foolish. My final remark. My final remark, but I've answered the question. Is the process fair and free? The process is stupid. There's no way that in 2020, according to Pope Gregory's calendar, we should be dealing with this nonsense. Now, finally, if we are going if we are going to say that G come and this is just to help you PPP supporters who just speak stupidly and others, well, especially because the two parties in GCOM as commissions are the PPP Civic and APNU AFC. If we are going to say, or you're going to say, on a repeated basis, that GCOM is compromised. You see, okay, Omar George just said it. I'm so happy because he said this. I'm not accusing him falsely. GCOM are thieves and APNU are the beneficiaries. Let me just help you because, I mean, if you're going to do things, are you're going to speak in this reckless manner, you have to do some processing first, which is, I've, I've gathered now that's difficult for you to do. But I'm going to help you to not make yourself look stupid on a continuous basis. After this, if you still do it, it's up to you, it's on you. At least I try to help you. As Omar George and others have been saying, that GCOM, GCOM has been thieves. Omar George had said that. GCOM are thieves and APNU is benefiting. I, d I don't know if you, and I'm, I am to laugh because I, I, it's been a while since I've seen people be this stupid, honestly speaking. It's just funny to me now. Do you recognize when you say that, that Says Gunraj, for example, is a commissioner at GCOM and a part of GCOM? Are you recognizing that you're calling your own commissioner thieves? Because when you say GCOM is thieving, GCOM has a secretariat, and then it has persons who work, of course, by extension. Are you recognizing, PPP Civic, that you're saying GCOM are thieves and Aptos benefiting, which means you're saying that GCOM's commissioners who are a part of GCOM are, th are thieving so that Aptos AFC can benefit. How you people could do this to yourselves? Can you at least pause and think before you type? GCOM is an entity with different people in it, which includes the PPP Civic Commissioners and APNU AFC Commissioners. Are you telling me when you say GCOM are thieves that you call calling SAS Gunraj a thief? If GCOM is compromised, then SAS is compromised too. So he's working against you all.
Guy, you don't ask me is a problem too late. You don't accuse me and ask me questions. Off my broadcast or just sit and learn something. So all of you who are just repeating this foolishness some people, stop and think. I'm trying to help you because I don't like my Ghanaian people looking stupid, honestly. Maybe if you have a private conversation in your house, you can talk like a fool. But on a public platform, the whole world sees you sometimes. So, so just be cautious. I'm trying to help you here. If you say that GCOM is a thief, then it means that commissioners of GCOM who are a part of GCOM are also thieves because GCOM is an entity. It's a whole. It's a unit. GCOM is not a person. It's a group of people. It's a commission run by a group of people. You wouldn't get help. You don't accuse me and ask me for help. Too bad. Ask Umar to help you. So what are y'all doing to yourselves? Righteousness, and I need to help some of you, because some of you are saying, why, why is a preacher seeking to do this? Because the scripture says that Yahweh loves righteousness. He hates wickedness. He is just. He says that you must, you must speak justly. You must judge with righteous judgment. Therefore, I shall speak to you. In a manner, especially the saints, that gives them guidance and directive. I hope that I would have helped you in some way. In some way. To understand, if you can, why you must not follow political leaders blindly. They are dangerous people, especially Guyanese politicians. They are dangerous people. They will lead you into the world of trouble. They're going to use words and you just eliminate all your common sense. I do not support any political party. I support what is proper. I support what is upright. Some of you need help because some of you are talking like church people. So let me help you church folk. Not, not Yeshua's people. The church folk. The Jesus crew. Let me help you tonight. The apostle Shaul was a Pharisee, meaning was a lawyer. He studied the law because Yeshua was governed by legal processes. So Yeshua had a law that they were governed by. He spoke to them regarding their law. That's what I'm doing to you tonight. Guyana has a legal process that governs it. I'm speaking to you regarding the law. Shaul is the one who wrote Romans, the letter to the Roman church. He told them in Romans 13, they must respect the law. They must honor those in authority. Why did he talk of politics? Because he said that they must, they must respect those who are in authority. For Yahweh establishes all authority. So you can't be in church and, and, and refuse to respect authority, regardless of who it is. What is frightening in the context of discussion <laughs> is that Barra Jaglio, the leader of the opposition, 
chose the chairman. I hope some, some, at least one of you hear that. Barrett Jaglio chose the chairman, said he has confidence in Claudette Singh that she'll do the right thing. Now his supporters are saying that it's three up new FC commissions against one, and one, plus one, Claudette Singh. It is obvious. It is obvious that, it, that you people are just on a mission to, by all means, subvert and escape reality regarding electoral processes in Guyana. And just say we've won at all costs, no matter what it is. And it's tragic. It's unfortunate. Therefore, back to my point. I will not label David Arthur Granger a dictator unless and until he demonstrates to me what a dictator is. If you are able to identify in this process what is dictatorial behavior, then do it please. You haven't done so all night. So I shall await any one of you, any one of you, please present to me what actions were taken in reference to the, find the def dictionary definition first, then beneath that or beside that, parallel to that, you shall demonstrate to me or highlight to me what actions did David Granger execute now because he's still waiting to be sworn in, if he would be. Show me where his behaviors were dictatorial. It's simple. It is simple. I appreciate your time. And I'm almost certain that somebody who has some degree of common sense is no longer going to follow suit and say that anybody's a dictator when they don't know what the word means. What you can do is maybe type the definition of the word because Omar George did it. <laughs> Yet he said David is, is, is a dictator. So you can type the definition of, of the term and then you can argue among yourselves. Until such time, those who are Fitting to be called what the dictionary defines a donkey. And it's a respectable term, by the way, for some of you. A donkey is a person who's overly stupid. You're not ordinarily stupid. Check the dictionary for the word. It's not just an animal. It's also a person who is overly stupid. So if that fits you, then bring on. And Omar is normally one of them. Bray all night, bray all morning. But I'm saying to you again, until anyone from APNU, AFC, PPP, Civic, TNM, PRP, whatever you are, tell us what by definition, or find another definition that mirrors this one or contradicts this one, then fine. But what you will see is cronyism. And cronyism is what you're seeing in the broadcast. Where, oh, I, I need to do this before I leave you. Another trait of a dictator, a contradictionary definition, is someone who has a cult like approach. Meaning, whatever they say, they follow us, just chase with it, just run with it. They don't care if it's right or wrong. 
I hope you get that. For example, coup d'etat. A coup d'etat is had when a military operation is had to overthrow a government. That's really a coup. Jaglio said that David Granger being sworn in will be a coup d'etat. Where's the military? Nowhere. His followers are saying there'll be a coup d'etat. A dictator, according to definition, is one who has a cult-like approach, where whatever he says, politically, the followers just run with it, regardless of if it's right or wrong. The next term is Granger's a dicta dictator. The followers didn't check the meaning of the word dictator. So they're now admitting that David Granger doesn't use, didn't use any force to get power because he's not even in office at the moment being sworn in. David Granger did not say he's a law unto himself. David Granger doesn't have total control over Guyana. But yet. <laughs> but yet. You are following blindly a leader who says he's a dictator. So Patricia Hurry is saying a dictator is a, is a government taken by force. What force was used to take the government now? Tell me, please, because we don't have a, a president who's been sworn in. So what force did he use? Come on, Patricia. I don't know where you're from. I don't know where you are. But you could do better than that. What force did David Arthur Granger use to be in power now? Because as far as I know, there's been nobody who has been sworn as president of Guyana to date. So how is he using force to be in government and he's not sworn in as a president? <laughs> I need to go. Patricia Harris said David Granger is not leaving the White House. It's, the house is green. You need help. And I really can't help you after this. I have exhausted, as some people say, I am overly patient. <laughs> I have exhausted my mental capacity to try to help you all. I can't anymore. <laughs> How could you be a guy and even say the president didn't leave the White House? Man, come on, man. Don't, please. Donald Trump is in the White House. David Granger is in State House. Get your child's social studies book or your grandchild's social studies book. Read it. COVID-19 is a good time to help some of your parents and grandparents to stop looking like so stupid on a public platform. Goodness gracious. When did a Guyanese president ever live in a White House? <laughs> you people cannot be... How can you people do this to yourselves? Seriously. And I'm saying this because I really, I, I, it, this is painful to see. Adults in Guyana doing this foolishness in the name of politics. You cannot be on a public platform speaking so stupidly. And you want to challenge me? You just lost credibility. Why must I listen to you? The president of Guyana lives in what is called the state house. The president of the U.S. lives in the White House. Granger never refused to leave anywhere. Because if you understand the law regarding the no confidence motion, the law of Guyana gives the recourse to challenge a ruling. And I do not support Apnu FC, but I'm telling you the law. He could go to court. They can challenge the ruling which they did. Then they went to the appellate court. And the appellate court judges forgot mathematics. Now look at some of you have a heart attack because that's how stupid you are. I, never, I, was, I was totally horrified to hear an appellate court judge say that 33 is not the absolute majority over 32. Thank you. How do you feel now? That's why I support David Granger. 
it was a disgrace for Guyana to hear. The, uh, the highest court in the land, 33 is not superior to 32 by mathematical value. But they also had recourse, the PPP took it, to go to the Caribbean Court of Justice. When they got to the Caribbean Court of Justice, the ruling was made. However, according to the laws of Guyana, the president has to name or give a date on which elections would be had. That is not dictatorial. It is legal. It is lawful. It is mandatory by law. Therefore, he named a date, March the 2nd. You voted because he said now he stole the election. He can't steal it if he didn't name a date. Does this sound to you as if I'm supporting David Granger now? When I just said to you that the appeals court was foolish to say that 32 is not superior to 32? It's an absolute majority. How do you feel now? Like a shoe heel. You just want to be stupid and raise arguments. Oh, he's talking. He, does, he supports Granger. Have common sense. I tell you all the time, you'll never find me. Never find me. Never find me. Being a political crony. Never. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you so much. Who's this person? Marvin Pierce. Oh, thank you. You've helped me tonight. So let, let the rest see. Omar run off the broad. He's gone already. You didn't get a trophy yet. Guyana has got a legislator, which will be the politicians you put in power. That's why you must be careful. They're the parliamentarians. They're the ones who, who have committees and so on that help to uh, uh, form laws. Then they have what's called the judiciary or the judicature, something like that, that, that term. What do they do? They're the ones in the legal system. So the legislator, the legislative arm of government, they make the laws. And then you have the judiciary. They're the ones who will imp implement the laws and scrutinize in terms of, of, of overseeing the laws and rule based on those laws. Do you understand? Do you understand? that in Guyana's legal system, you have what is called legal recourse. The courts are there. If you have a grievance, you take it to the court. The court makes a ruling because the court has been vested with that authority, the various courts in Guyana. How do you then tell me that David Granger is a dictator when he named an election date when the elections were had, and now he's saying that he's willing to abide by the rulings of the court. Where is dictatorial behavior in that? I, therefore, I'm here in Guyana, by the way. That's why I tell you, because I live in Guyana, I'm not the kind of preacher who is way in some other Canada and and Britain and UK talking to you all. I'm in Guyana. I have come home to my country in 2015 because I was sent to this nation to speak to it in a spiritual context and to ensure that the will of Yahweh in terms of his word is heard in this land. And I would not fail. So thank you for your time. I hope that I would have addressed your concern regarding my not calling David Granger dictator. I will not do so unless you give me evidence that he is one. Most of you call him a dictator without wanting to be one. I can promise you that. 
I promise you would never want David Granger to act like a dictator with what's going on in Guyana right now. You would not, you cannot deal with it. You cannot deal with it. So I appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing the broadcast. And I will await someone making a comment probably that will show that David Granger is a dictator by evidence and dictionaries a definition. Until then, I shall not do so. Thank you. And goodbye. Thank you, my father. Harold London is my father. I appreciate your words. Thank you so much, Daddy. I'm trying. And I've given, I've given it my best shot. Thank you, Troy, and others. I appreciate it. Shalom to you if you're a saint. Thank you. Thank, thanks to all of you. Goodbye.